This is the Business Day Exclusive with Elizabeth Musa. Today I'm here with Adebola Daniels, who shared his experience of how he was badly treated at the KFC outlet at the Motala Mohammed Airport. And he's here with us today at Business Day to discuss what happened that day and just the way forward. So welcome to Business Day, Adebola Daniels. Thank you for having me. So very quickly, I know you already shared it on social media. You put out tweets detailing the events that happened on that day. What, would you mind recapping some of these things to us today? Um, yes, of course. Um, so I I arrived at the airport um, in the morning, as as I normally do. Um, there wasn't much of a, you know, it was, a, it was just a normal day. I went through security, went through immigration. There was no issues at all. Um, so for the first time, normally we we normally choose different lounges. We don't go to the same place all the time. Um, my brother was actually telling me to go to a different lounge, but um, my wife wanted to have KFC. So I said, you know what? Let's just let's just have KFCs. We don't have KFC, you know, maybe in a few months. Anyway. So let's just do KFC. Um, so we walked into the, the the premises, and at the point of trying to choose where to sit, so I was still saying, oh, should we sit here or here? Um, the lady at the counter said, you know, no, no wheelchairs allowed. Um, I think, first of all, what struck me was, you know, she she said it was, I guess she shouted it across the counter to where we we're sitting, which was very close to the door. Um, and we all kind of stopped and, you know, froze in shock. Um, and, you know, my brother kind of said, look, what, what do you mean? Um, I said, she repeated, no wheelchairs allowed. So the I think the member of NAPCO, the people who pushed the wheelchairs, who was with me, um, you know, walked up to the tilt to go and talk to her and said, "Oh no, it's a it's a private chair. It's not a, a commercial chair." And to me, I didn't even understand what the difference was. Was what's the difference between it being my chair or the airport chair? But well, she just insisted, no wheelchairs allowed. At that point, you know, my brother then you know got quite upset and he he walked up to her with my wife and they started trying to you know reason with her, trying to explain, and she was not having it. Um, and at that point, you know, you know, things started getting heated. People were going back and forth with each other. Um, at the point, I think that's when my wife picked up her phone and started recording. In all of this, um, I quite, I felt quite frankly embarrassed. I won't lie to you. I felt a little bit ashamed as well because I felt um, this is all my fault. You know, if I had just gone somewhere else, you know, we wouldn't be here. Um, and I also felt you know, exposed. I just felt it, it wasn't nice that, you know, I'm causing this grief for my family members that were here. So I just started imploring them that let's go. Let's go, guys. Doesn't matter. Let's go. Um and um, you know, they were like, no, we shouldn't go. And I said, look, guys, what do you want to do? Like, let's let's just go. So eventually we all left. Um, I went to a different lounge and everyone was, you know, obviously and visibly quite upset. Um then my wife went back and said, look, I, I don't think I don't think she understood. Let me let me just go back and talk to her. Um, and she went back to talk to her, and I think that's the point where she had the audio clip where she where she was trying to explain the matter again. And she insisted that look, I guess she was in a, the 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 um staff was in a much calmer manner at the time, and she said, look, just no wheelchairs allowed. Everyone knows in this KFC, no wheelchairs allowed. Um, and at that point, you know, what could we do? We just you know we, we kind of licked our wounds, exited the place, and headed onto the to the plane. Um, initially, I was never going to tweet anything about it. I just was going to let it be one of those things. It's not the first kind of thing I've experienced in Nigeria before. Um, but I guess it was such a public embarrassment, especially that there were so many people at the at the restaurant as well. I think there were five, six other people. Um, and I felt it, it could have been handled in, more pop, in, a, in a much better way. They didn't have to be so combative about it. Um, and I guess when I got to London, I I, I thought, you know, I, I let me just see what's on my mind. I don't I don't really care if he does something or doesn't, but I'm gonna I'm gonna speak up for people who have been through this and let them know or let people know that this is my experience. So far, so good. We've seen how the authorities have, have handled this situation. We've seen that um fan is taking action, closing down that outlet. We've also seen that uh, I mean just recently KFC have also put out a statement on their social media apologizing and saying that they will actually train their staff to handle matters like this better. From that statement, I'm not seeing that they're saying that this is something that will be corrected in terms of treat um accepting people living with disabilities into their 
premises, what they're saying is that they're going to treat their, um, teach their staffs, train their staffs to treat people living with disabilities better. So my understanding from that is, oh, you're going to treat and um, tra train them to probably be less combative, but you're not going to actually um, address this situation. So what, 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 what are your views on this? Well, firstly, you know, you you alluded to the fact that you know fan you know moved very swiftly, and my my sincere gratitude to you know from the presidency to the honourable minister of aviation, Professor Kiamo, to fan to the national assembly, you know to Lagos state government as well, so that they all swung into action in a, in a manner I've not seen before, and, I, and they have my wow. immense gratitude. Um, you know, when our government gets something right, we must applaud them and say, you know what, they got that right. You know, and I was Absolutely. very grateful for that. I am not a uh, a KFC spokesperson, so I can't, you know, try to explain on their behalf what I think they were trying to say on that statement. I think for me, what's important is, you know, going forward, there is a law in place. Um, there's a dis discrimination against person living with disability act that you know was signed into law 2018 and has become recently enforceable. And I think it is time for that law to to show some teeth. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be particularly KFC or or whoever it is, but People have to understand and organizations have to understand that they have a responsibility to, to people, not just like myself, but to general populace, to first of all, exactly. to treat people fairly. Yeah, to treat people fairly, to treat people equally, and to treat people ultimately with respect. Um, for me personally, I am glad that my so-called position has brought this to the to the limelight, but I didn't, you know, ask for you know fans to shut down the place. I didn't request that. They've just done what their laws stated that they should do, um, and, I, and I don't, I don't advocate for any type of consequences for anybody. What I just want is that there is a law in place, and the law is there to protect people like myself, and I want that law to be enforced. So I, I can't really comment on on what KFC's intention was with that statement. Um, all I can say is that I hope they, they, they take a lesson from this, um, and make amends where they can make amends and where they should make amends in accordance with the law. Um, and, you know, become better company for, for it. Absolutely. Thanks for that. So um, let's talk about the fact that you had mentioned earlier that this is not the first time you'll be treated in this type of way in Nigeria. So do you, do you mind painting a picture of some of the scenarios you've experienced in Nigeria as against when you are out of the country? Um, so the kind of experience I've faced in Nigeria, you know, I'm not trying to, again, throw anybody under the bus, but I have seen that our people generally don't understand disability. Um, they don't understand that disability doesn't make you less than, it just makes you do things in a different way. Um, for me personally, um, I have to say, the experience I've had, I, I've not actually been refused entry to somewhere before, uh, like happened today. Uh, what I have had is, Experience where people have made comments about me being in a certain place. Um, I was in the cinema once and somebody asked, you know, are, are cripples allowed in here? Um, and that was very shocking. Um, at the time, I didn't say anything about it. I didn't do anything about it. This was years and years ago. Um, but ultimately, these things do happen. And as opposed to, to, I guess, being outside the country, there are laws in place. And I think that's what I keep banging on, the laws that are in place. You know, in, in the UK or every other country I've been into, um, where there is no access possible, uh, people speak to you with respect. You know, we can all talk about, you know, some of the London on the ground or train stations that don't have wheelchair access and people always trying to wait to, to find a, a way for you to work on your behalf. And if you can't, they explain to you in a, in a manner that is respect to, uh, respectful. Um, respectful. You understand what, yeah, and you understand what you need to do and how you can work around your challenges. Um, and I think that's one type of behavior that in Nigeria that we need to learn as a people. Um, not just government, not just organizations like KFC, but people generally need to understand that people who have challenges are not a burden to you. And you shouldn't see them as a burden. You should see them as people who, you know, have a different reality from yours. And we should all be able to learn from each other's realities. And at the same time, help each other make our realities easier where possible. Do you think that Nigeria's government is doing enough to foster inclusiveness and bad discrimination against people living with disabilities? I think everything is about perspective. Uh, ultimately, um, if me and you were having this conversation 25 years ago, you know, people living with disabilities and the challenges they face would have been at the very bottom of what people cared about and what people wanted to see change. 
And I think times have changed and we should understand that the government is responding to times that are changing. Um, in the last five, six years, you know, I have to say that act is one of the, the very big wins of the Buhari government. Um, it's, it's, there is a, a marked change in how people relate to people with disabilities. Um, I guess it's due to a generational shift as well. The younger people are growing older, we're getting more exposed as a country. And we're also seeing that uh, our limitations do not necessarily define us. And I think government is, is, is making the right steps. Um, you have to understand that this act came into place uh, a few years ago, and I think it just recently became enforceable. So ultimately, they are giving corporations, organizations time to enact these changes. And what are they asking people to do? Treat people with respect, don't discriminate against people, make sure your ground floor levels are accessible to wheelchairs, um, make sure there's audio description where possible or, or things are written that way possible. Um, I don't think they are asking for, for the world just yet. Um, we have to understand that it's a progressive system. In 20 mm -hmm. years time, we're going to look back and say, this is not enough. We need to do much better. But we have to take things step by step. And when the government is, is doing things uh, or shedding a light to something that we don't necessarily care about in our day-to-day -day lives, we should say, you know, kudos to them. And we thank them for it. And we ask them to, to continue concentrating on it and, and adding more efforts to it. And, you know, hopefully we get to a place like our, our neighboring countries or countries around the world where, you know, accessibility and disability rights are the same as human rights. Fantastic. In my understanding, you still think that a lot of work still needs to be done in terms of legislation in this country in respect to people living with disabilities, right? Well, two things. I think the legislation as it stands needs to first of all be enforced and enforced properly first. Um, you know, the steps that, you know, FAN has taken is, is, is the first steps to make sure these legislations are enforced. Um, and once they are enforced to a standard where we are happy with, then we take it the next step further. What is the next thing that we can make um, access? What is the next thing that we can do to make sure that people living with disabilities are more included in society? So everything is a step by step. There is no finish line. Even the countries in the West are still finding ways to evolve their policies to make the, their communities more accessible. So I can't say the Nigerian government is going to finish everything today or next year or 10 years from now. They can't. You know, it is an evolving, evolving situation. There are new disabilities that are coming into play, you know, every few years. Um, and we have to understand them and give them the same grace that they deserve. Do you think that awareness can be created from the primary school um, level to up until tertiary institutions where more people understand that they need to be more accommodating to people living with disabilities, understanding that they're, everyone is just a person? I think you've said it all already. I think people, first of all, have to understand that regardless of your limitations, you are first and foremost a human being. Um, and you are a human being with hopes, with dreams, with fears, um, with ambition, with things that make you sad, with things that are complicated, with your own challenges. You are ultimately just a human being. And I think where we can move forward is understanding that we need to treat people and tell people that, look, whatever people's circumstances are, uh, socially, economically, whatever it is, people are first of all human beings. And I think that's one thing I hope we can develop more in our country, a sense of empathy. Um, you know, things are, are can be tough for people. Um, I know people have a lot going on, you know, in their lives. But at the same time, if we lose the very basic of caring for someone or our, our next door neighbor, we lose everything to do with humanity. And you know, that's where we should not get to. That's anarchy. As you said, the school and stuff like that. Uh, one thing I have noticed is that when we, from a young age, expose children to things that, you know, um, they're not comfortable with or they're not familiar with, in normalizing it for them. So what we have to do is normalize um, disability, you know, say, oh, that young man, what's happened to him? Oh, he just has a bit of a challenge. He does these things differently. Oh, he can't do this. Oh, he can do this, but in a different way. We need to take time to explain to people that because people don't th do things the way we do, doesn't mean that they can't do it and doesn't mean that their way of doing it is wrong. I like how you said that. And I like how you just said that you, you just explained to the next person that, oh, it just has a certain limitation. It doesn't mean that this person has an issue. So uh, it actually brings me to the question I was going to ask you. And I think you partly answered that. But just individually, like me, someone else, every, every, everyone who probably is watching, how else can we be more supportive towards people that are living with any form of disability? For me personally, it, 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 first of all, generally it differs from person to person. You have to understand that. Okay. For me, um, Adebola, 
I've always preferred when people ask me questions. If you don't understand something, ask me a question. Don't assume. I don't like when people make assumptions. Um, and because I ask you to or tell you that you can ask me a question, doesn't mean that you can do so in a rude manner. You must always be able to come to people politely. Um, if you don't understand something, show interest. Um, ask how people do things. And when you understand how people do things, learn. Don't just assimilate it and let it you know, go out the next year, the next minute. Learn, understand that. That's the first step. Also, show empathy. When you are in an environment, take, take note of things around you. You've gone into that hotel, there are 22 steps to enter. Challenge it. Why are there how many steps to enter your hotel? Why, why is it the case? You know, you've, you've gone to, to a government building, you've gone to go and renew your passport, you've gone to, go, you've gone to the bank. You know, the security doors are not wide enough for a wheelchair to enter. Why? Why is it the case? Think about those kind of things that are hindrances to people who live lives that are different from yours. Um, the kind of barriers to entry that we have socially against disabled people or people living with disabilities are too much to count. You know, you talk about going to the bank and most security doors are not wide enough for chairs to pass. Um, a lot of them don't have ramps. Um, there's not a suitable place for a person to park so they can open the door wide enough to come out of the car. Um, so many things are, 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 are open to be changed and discussed about. And I think for me, it's just everybody taking just one minute just to look at your surroundings and say, oh, how can I make this better? There's a young lady I spoke to probably about four years ago who was an architect. And she, her, her trademark design was to do cobbled floors when she was when she's building or designing properties. And I said, wow. well, you know, cobbled floors are my nightmare. Do you know how hard it is for a wheelchair to move on cobbled floors? It is the worst thing you can do for me in this life. For me to go to any venue and from my car to the door of the place, the, the floor is cobbled. That is just a nightmare. Why can't it be smooth? And she, she thought about that for a second and thought, you know what? That's the most basic thing she can do in her design going forward that will make life easy for people that are hundreds and hundreds of people that she didn't even know about. And those are the kind of things I, I want to challenge in terms of you know infrastructure. The smallest things that we can do like that will make a world of difference to people who live with challenges. So actually, that's a, an actually brilliant perspective to it. If everyone would just learn to show more empathy, um, learn about learn from the people that are living with disabilities, understand what they want, and just challenge challenge the status quo when we see things that are not right. I think this is a very interesting way to put it. Thank you so much. So what should uh, people living with disabilities do when they encounter any form of discrimination? I mean, you uh, you, you had mentioned that you, at first on your social media, you'd mentioned that you're someone that would normally not like to rock a boat, but then you actually did. So how would you say that other people that are living with disabilities, how, do you, how would you advise them to handle any form of discrimination that they face? Number one, know your rights. That is the first thing. Know your rights. You have the law to back you now. Go ahead and read that law. Go ahead and read the act. Understand it. Understand what your rights are. When you understand what your rights are, then you know when you have a stand or when you don't have a stand. And I think, you know, it calls back to myself as well and my experience. You know, I didn't even think about oh, what my rights could be because I just thought I was less than at that moment in time. And I felt sad and I felt, oh, I have to leave. But if I had taken time to say, oh, these are my actual rights, I'm not going anywhere and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, I would have been able to, to stand on business, let me put it that way. But ultimately, for that brief moment in time, I even forgot what my rights were. And when I forgot what my rights were, I had to, to go away, think about it and understand that, you know what? This was illegal. This was wrong. And this should not have happened. And when things you see things that are illegal like that, report it to the relevant bodies. There are people out there who have, have organizations out there who have set up themselves to help you. Lasoda is one of them, the Lagos State's uh, Office of Disability Affairs. They are doing amazing, amazing work. You know, report them to them. Your know, spokesperson is, is doing, or your GM is doing amazing, amazing work where she is right now. Yeah, she is. And when things, yeah, and when things go to her, she takes action. So understand your rights, understand your reporting channels, understand what you can do to report things that are wrong. Once you report things, things can be actioned. If you don't report things and you suffer discrimination and indignity by yourself, you can't then complain when nothing is being done because nobody knows it happened. And if I had just left, you know, KFC and traveled and gone home to London and didn't say anything, nobody would have known it happened and, you know, won't be having this conversation. So talk, speak. Um, the very worst that will happen is that nobody will listen. But at least you can say to yourself, I spoke, I said something. Um, and I said something to the right people. And these bodies, as I said, they exist to help you, to help me, to help anybody who have these kind of challenges. 
Thank you so much, Adebola Daniels. Knowing your right is absolutely important, knowing and understanding your right. And I like how you just put that out there, captured it very succinctly. Do you have any final words for uh, parting words for us today? Yes, ultimately, everything that happens to you um, happens for a reason. And I think that you should, anyone who has a challenge, you should not get lost in, in feeling sorry for yourself. Um, I do strongly believe that a disability or, uh, or a challenge does not necessarily mean that you have a limitation. I've always said it is an invitation to live your life differently and you must choose to accept that invitation. Thank you very much for sharing your time with us today. And thank you. I do hope that you have an amazing day and an amazing year. And just continue being awesome. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you, Elizabeth. And this has been the Business Day Exclusive. My name is Elizabeth Musa. Keep watching Business Day. And don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms at Business Day on X, on Instagram. And we're on YouTube at Business Day as well. Keep watching and keep following us for stories like this. And we'll keep amplifying all of these stories and making sure that voices are heard. Thank you very much. My name is Elizabeth Musa.